Hey, welcome once again to the Journey Church, New York City. I'm Tarek, and I want to thank you for joining me today as we continue what's already been a really powerful teaching series called Fully Engaged. Now, during this series, we've been trying to exchange the boredom of the bare minimum for the excitement and the joy of a life that's fully engaged with God. And today, what I want to talk to you about is how to fully engage with the way that God created you, how to fully engage with your gifts and your talents. I think you're going to get a lot out of today's message. And so if you haven't yet, go ahead and click that button beside the live stream player so you can download your message notes. You can use them to follow along during the message today. Now, we just completed the Summer Olympics in Paris. And it was so much fun watching all these world-class athletes show off their gifts and their talents in the pursuit of gold. And what it got me to thinking about was some of the best American uh, Olympians of all time. Now, I've got my top list I'm going to share with you. I want to see, you can see if you agree with me, but I want to see if you can identify some of these Olympians. Okay, the, the first one won four gold medals in track and field in the 19. 32 Olympics in Berlin in Nazi Germany. If you guess Jesse Owens, you would be right. And he may be my favorite Olympian of all time because of all that he had to overcome in order to be successful. Now let's jump a, a little bit closer to our time. This Olympic team won the gold medal in basketball in the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. You probably know them as the dream team. And they were so good, they defeated their opponents by an average of 44 points per game. The greatest basketball team of all time. All right, this next Olympian is the most decorated Olympian of all time. He won 23 gold medals over four Olympics in swimming. If you guessed Michael Phelps, you would be exactly right. No one has won more gold medals than Michael Phelps. All right, this final Olympian comes right up to the present time. She is the most decorated gymnast uh, in the Olympics of all time, having won seven gold medals over three Olympics. Of course, you know her. It's Simone Biles, and she just, she just competed in what's probably her final Olympics. Now, looking back over these Olympians, I wish I just had a small amount of the athletic ability that they have. But while we tend to idolize these athletes and their abilities, what I want you to understand is that God has gifted you with specific gifts and abilities that are just as, if not more, valuable. And while you might not be able to do a backflip or even outrun a one-legged elderly man with asthma, if you will engage with God, if you will engage in the gifts that He's given you, not only can you fulfill God's purpose for your life, but you can live a more exciting, a more purposeful and significant life. And so let me ask you, are you living a fully engaged life where you're using the gifts that God has given you? A life that is focused, a life that is engaged, a life that is driven, intentional, and purposeful. Now, for some of you, I know the answer is yes. You're having a real impact using your God-given gifts. For others, the answer is no. You're not fully engaged. The gifts God has given you, well, they're rotting away unused. I mean, you're on the sidelines, and you're, you're missing out on your purpose and the life that God created you to live. See, here's the truth. You're not an accident. You were put on this planet by God intentionally in this moment in history for a reason. Now, you may be thinking, you know, Carrick, I, I hear what you're saying, but what you're saying doesn't apply to me. I, I don't have any, any real significant gifts. God doesn't have a big purpose for my life. But listen, in the same way that those Olympians I just highlighted have special athletic gifts... God created you with special spiritual gifts in order to complete your mission. And your gifts aren't ra random. They're not random at all. They were intentionally given to you by God. In fact, the Apostle Paul says it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And by the way, this is uh, our first verse. So wherever you're joining us for Church Online today, I want you to read this out loud with me. So uh, it's, uh, it's there in your notes. I'll put it up on the screen as well. But let's read it together. Are you ready? Go. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. Now, to me, this, this verse is so empowering. God has intentionally given you spiritual gifts, and your gifts have the best impact 
when they're used in the church, within the church, to help build others up in Jesus' name. You see, God gives you specific spiritual gifts that fit the mission He created you to accomplish. But He didn't give you these gifts for your own benefit. He gave you these gifts so that you can serve Him, so that you can serve others, so that you can serve His church. And while God put these gifts inside of you, for many of you listening to me right now, your gifts are lying dormant within you, unused, wasted. And that's a shame. Because these gifts were given to you specifically by God. No one else has your unique makeup of spiritual gifts. No one else on this planet can do or accomplish what you can do or accomplish. No one. In fact, Jesus prayed a specific prayer for you and for me and for the mission that God has given us. This was in his final prayer in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 18. And look at what Jesus prayed for us. He says, just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And so listen, today the choice is yours. God's not going to force you to engage the gifts that he's given you. But what a tragedy. What a tragedy it would be to go through life and miss out on the excitement of, of, of fulfilling God's mission for your life. What a tragedy if the world in our church missed out on the benefits of your God-given gifts. And that's why today I want to show you how to fully engage your God-given gifts. Because I want you to live the life that you were created for. And so in your notes, let's look at this. How to be fully engaged with my gifts. I want you to live the life God created you for. And I want to look at a few biblical steps here. Here's the first step to be fully engaged with your gifts. Write this in. Be thankful that God has given me gifts. Be thankful that God has given me gifts. Now, wherever you're joining us for Church Online today, I want you to hold your hands up right now. And I want you to look at your fingertips. Do that right now. Look at your fingertips. Have you ever wondered why you have unique fingertips? Have you ever wondered why you're the only person on the planet that has your exact fingerprints? Well, it's because there's never been anyone in this world like you. And there never will be another person exactly like you. You're a custom-designed masterpiece. You have extraordinary talents. You have extraordinary abilities unlike anyone else. But listen, your gifts only become extraordinary when you partner with the God who created you to use them. The problem is we're oftentimes so busy comparing ourselves to others and wishing we had their gifts that we miss out on just how blessed and how gifted we are. And we forget to thank God for how wonderfully made we are. Instead, we say things like, well, if I could only sing like her, if I could only speak like him, if I was only as smart as she was. You know, this type of comparison is destructive. And not not only does it create resentment and jealousy within us, but it, it keeps you from recognizing the wonderful gifts that God has already given you. And so the key is to begin with the heart of thankfulness. Be thankful that God created you exactly the way that he did. That he created you as his masterpiece so that you would live a fully engaged life and fulfill his purpose. The Apostle Paul understood this. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, he wrote these words. He said, for we are God's what? Masterpiece. I want you to circle that word in your notes. We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. Why Why did he create us as a masterpiece? He tells us. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Don't miss this. You are God's masterpiece. God's word says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So pause and be thankful for how God created you from top to bottom. Be thankful for the gifts that he's entrusted to you. Be thankful for your your uniqueness instead of always critiquing every one of your flaws. Because listen, when, when you criticize yourself, what you're really doing is you're criticizing God because he made you. In fact, the next time you start to complain about yourself, the next time you start to compare yourself to someone else, ask yourself, do I really want to tell God that he messed up when he made me? Now, the first step to be fully engaged with your gifts is to be thankful for your gifts. Be thankful for how God made you. And then let's look at the second step to being fully engaged with my gifts. Write this in. Be proactive in discovering my gifts. Be proactive in discovering my gifts. Now, those, uh, those Olympians, those world-class athletes that, that we were just looking at, 
Yes, their God-given talent was always there. It was always lying dormant within them. But before they be could become Olympians, they first needed to figure out what their abilities were, and then they needed to develop them and, and, work, and work on them if they wanted to win gold. Now listen, the same is true when it comes to your spiritual gifts and how God made you. To accomplish all the great things that God has for you, it's important that, that you're proactive in trying to discover what those gifts really are. Now, when I say spiritual gifts, and you hear me say that, you may think that sounds a little weird. I mean, spiritual gifts sound so, well, spiritual, right? And it has this weird tone to it. And you may think, well, you know what, I've got to be super spiritual if I'm going to have spiritual gifts. But that's not the case at all. In fact, let me explain. As a believer, you have spiritual gifts, but you also have natural gifts. Now, natural gifts are the abilities and talents that you are born with, the things that you're naturally good at. Jesse Owens had the natural gift of speed. Now, he had to develop that gift, but that giftedness was within him. It was in his, within his DNA from when he was born, even though he had to develop it. And these natural gifts are the talents that God has given you to make a living. Uh, the talents he's given you to excel in sports or in hobbies. You know, maybe you're good at math. Maybe you're really good with your hands. How, so you were born with your natural gifts. However, you weren't born with spiritual gifts. You were born again with spiritual gifts. See, these are the gifts that God activates within you when you become a Christian in order to serve others and to serve him in his church. See, these spiritual gifts are crafted to your personality. They come alive in you whenever you become a follower of Jesus. See, whenever you use one of the gifts God has given you to serve in the church, whenever you serve someone in Jesus' name, you're using a spiritual gift. Maybe, maybe it's the gift of encouragement when you encourage someone who's struggling. Maybe it's the gift of leadership when you lead a growth group here at the journey. Maybe it's the gift of mercy when you decide that you're going to serve in one of our homeless ministries. Whatever it is, you're using your spiritual gifts to serve others and do something good for Jesus. That's why I love what it says in 1 Peter 4.10. Now, this is our memory verse for today. So this is another verse I want us to read out loud uh, together. So read it with me, beginning with God has. Are you ready? Go. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. So God has given you spiritual gifts from a great variety of spiritual gifts. And he says, use them well to serve one another. Now, notice, God gives you spiritual gifts not for yourself. Spiritual gifts are not for yourself, but they're to be used to serve others in Jesus' name. And the fun part of this is there's a great variety of spiritual gifts. We don't all have the same ones. There, there are a lot of possible gifts God could give you. And so how do you discover what your spiritual gift might be? Well, in your notes, you'll see that I listed uh, a long list of spiritual gifts that are found in the Bible. Now, this isn't every single spiritual gift that's listed in the Bible. It's not an exhaustive list, but it's a, long, it's a good list. It's a, it's a really solid list. And though you may be disappointed that athletic ability and making money aren't on this list, I promise you the ones on this list are even better. And so to help you discover your gifts, I'm going to ex briefly explain each of this. And this is what I want you to do. Because a lot of times you already know and can identify what your gifts are. So as I go through this list, here's what I want you to do. I simply want you to put a check mark next to the ones that you think might be present in your life. Or maybe someone else noticed this spiritual gift in your life and said, hey, you, you have this. And so you don't want to mark all of them. You don't want to mark none of them. But you want to be able to mark two to four of these. That you say, you know what, I think I might have this spiritual gift. And you sort of self identify as we go through. So I'm going to explain them. If you think it might be present in your life, put a check mark. The first one is the gift of administration. The gift of administration. Now, if, if you have this, you're good at details. You're good at organizing things. You get really excited if someone gives you a label maker for your birthday. You might have the gift of administration. So put a check if you might have that. The next one is the gift of of discernment. The gift of discernment is this is where people always ask you, what should I do? You're good at giving advice. People trust you. The gift of discernment. The next is the gift of encouragement. You're always encouraging others. Now, we should all do this. We should all be encouraging, but you do this all the time. You lift other people up. Next, you see the gift of giving. Now here it's, it's primarily talking about the financial area of giving. God calls all of us to give, but whenever you give, you go above and beyond 
in your giving. And then you have the gift of leadership. How do you know if you have the gift of leadership? Well, look behind you. Is anybody following you? If you think you're a leader, but there's no one following you, well, you're merely out for a walk. Then there's the gift of shepherding. The gift of shepherding means that you care about people. And, you know, I share a prayer request with you. You remember it. You follow up with me. You're good at guiding other people to grow in their faith. That's the gift of shepherding. Then you have the gift of teaching. This is where you like to study. You like to communicate. You like to share what you've learned with others because you want to see them grow uh, in their faith. The gift of teaching. Then there's the gift of pioneering. What is that? Pioneering. Well, you love to start new things. New things excite you. New challenges, they may create anxiety in others, but no, they, they get you fired up. That's the gift of pioneering. New things. And then there's the gift of evangelism. Now, God calls all of us to share our faith with others. But some of you, well, you just do this naturally. You're always talking about your faith at every opportunity. You're constantly inviting your friends to come to church. Again, we should all do that, but this is something that comes so easy and naturally to you. Then there's the gift of faith. And what is that? The gift of faith means that you have a really high trust in God. You don't worry as much as other people do. Why? Because you know that God is in control. You know that he's got you. That's the gift of faith. You following me so far? Hopefully as we go through these, you're not marking all of them, but which ones do you feel like are really present in your life? We've got a few more, so stay with me. Here's the next one. The gift of hospitality. You're a good host. You love having people over to your apartment, hosting a growth group, or maybe you love serving on the welcome team and welcoming people to church. That's hospitality. Then there's the gift of mercy. You're a good listener and, and you're empathetic. You can relate to and love people, even people who are really difficult to love. You have the gift of mercy. Then there's the gift of serving and helping, and that means that you're ready to help at all times. You love volunteering. You help out however you can. Even if it's picking up garbage, you're in. And then here's the final gift that we have listed here. It's the gift of wisdom and counseling. People say you give wise advice. You, you tend to have the, the, the knowledge and the ability to, give the, to make the best decision or tell others the best path to take. Now, I I briefly described each of these. I want you to look back over that list and reflect on yourself. And I want you to put a check mark next to the gifts that you see in yourself, the gifts that you believe God has given you. Maybe it's the gifts that others have recognized in you and they keep bringing it up to you again and again. I want you to take a moment and and mark those. And, And what I also want you to do is take a moment right now and share your top spiritual gifts on your online connection card. You might have to scroll down below the video player and and see the connection card there. But when you get to the next steps page on your connection card, there's a blank and you can share with us your top, what you believe are your top spiritual gifts. We would love to know that because in knowing that we can help you get plugged into a ministry where you can use that gift and enjoy it and, and become fully alive. But take a moment right now, mark those gifts. I mean, which ones do you really enjoy? I mean, which ones do you wish you could spend more time doing? Which ones are you good at or others say you're good at? So take a moment and check the ones that are good for you. And then once you've done, please share that with us on your online connection card today. We would love to know that. Now, this was just sort of a cursory test where you could sort of self-identify. If you want to go deeper, we've developed um, and, and, and have used this with others, this test called the shape inventory. Do you know your shape, how God has shaped you? And if you want to go deeper, this is about a 20-minute uh, test you can take. You answer some questions, and it tells you your top spiritual gifts and how you could use those gifts to serve the Lord. So if you want a, a copy of this, you can download it. Just click the button beside the live stream player. You can download it. And uh, you can go through it. But promise me, if you take the shape inventory, email me your results at kt1 at journeynyc.com. kt1 at journeynyc.com. I would love to know uh, what you find out about yourself. Listen, what's the point of having gifts if you never use them, if you never fully engage with them? And that's what Paul means in 1 Timothy 4.14 when he says this. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you receive. Don't neglect the spiritual gift that's within you. It's great to discover your gifts, but to prevent them from being unused, to prevent them from being wasting, from wasting away and collecting dust, you've got to take this next step. Back in your notes, here's the third step to engaging your, your gifts. Be quick to use my gifts. Be quick to use my gifts. Now that you have an idea of what your gifts are, it's time to begin to use them. You know, every week at the journey, 
People use their gifts to make a difference. And, and the key for all of them is making that initial decision to get started. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, the people who serve the most at the journey, their circumstances weren't perfect. Their lives weren't perfect. Their schedules were full and busy. But they made a decision to step up and say, God has given me these gifts, so I'm going to step up and I'm going to use them now. And I want you to hear from just a few of these individuals right now. Take a look at this. One of the reasons I like serving in church is we're really the first group of people that anyone sees. We're the first impression they have. Serving is something that I love to do because I love to see people smile. I love to interact with them. How are you doing? How's your week going? What do you got going on? I've been serving at the church for a little while now. Um, three years and even before that I've been serving pretty much all of my adolescent life as a musician at the church and I think it's just really important that we emphasize serving. Um, it's a way to connect not only with God but also with the people of God who you serve with. You know after coming here for a few times um, I wanted to get involved with the people, make some friends. Um, I think that's really important especially in a city as crazy as New York to um, have a good base of people that um, are like-minded and share the faith with you. I think I started serving in church with my parents when I was pretty young. Uh, so I think when I was in high school, I started serving in middle school uh, at my church back in North Carolina. And then I've really just been serving ever since then. I think it was really important for me to serve the Lord in that way and to get closer to the people in the church. And it also helps you just grow as a Christian and just cultivate that environment for yourself to continue to mature in Christ. I like serving and I feel it's important because it just, it gives me a sense of purpose. I feel like I'm really helping everybody here in the church, I'm really contributing to what God wants in my life and what God wants in everybody else's life. First of all, it is very pleasant. The staff is very friendly. And we really get deep down into serving, sending out letters for baptism, inviting you back for our second services or third services, and also welcoming you as our first members. And as you check out your connection card every Sunday, you will find a spot there where you can fill out those forms. I'm glad to see so many people in our church engaging their gifts and using them to serve God and others in the church. But the sad truth is, a lot of you listening to me, you've been really slow in using your gifts. And I know there are a lot of excuses. I mean, the, the number one is, listen, Carrick, I'm just too busy. Have you ever felt that, that your schedule is just too busy to serve? But here's the thing. We live in New York City. Everyone has a busy schedule. And the truth is, you have time for the things that you want to have time for. You make time for the things you value the most. And yes, it, it may mean you have to say no to some things of lesser importance. But when you use your gifts to serve God, I promise you, it is the best. It's the most fulfilling use of your time. Or maybe your excuse is, you know, I'm not qualified. I'm not good enough to serve. But let me tell you this, you don't need to be a Bible scholar in order to lead a growth group. You don't need to be a child expert in order to serve in Journey Kids. You just have to love Jesus and have a willing heart. Now maybe you don't think you're spiritually mature enough to serve. That you first need to get your life in order, get all the sin out of your life before you can serve. But let me tell you this, if God only used perfect people, no one would ever serve. That, that, is, that is why you, you should just jump in. Uh, perfection is not a prerequisite to serving in the church. Listen, no matter who you are, we have a place for you to serve at the journey. And I promise you, God wants to use you. Today, I challenge you to take a step of faith and find a place to serve Him, to move forward, to, to find something, to try something, even if you've been hesitant. Listen, you were created for this. Using your gifts to serve God is part of His purpose for your life. And when you do... There's something powerful that happens. Not only when you serve are you a blessing to others, but you receive God's blessing in return. Look at what Jesus says in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. He says, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. 
So listen, God knows how precious your time is. He knows that you're busy. But when you use your gifts to serve Him and to bless others, your time is never wasted. Paul knew the importance of this. And that's why in 2 Timothy 1.6, he writes, Fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you. Fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you. When you fully engage and fan into flames your spiritual gifts, God will provide you everything that you need to fulfill the task that He has put before you. So to be fully engaged with your gifts, be thankful to God for your gifts, be proactive in discovering your gifts, be quick to put your gifts into practice. And then finally, write this in, the final step to fully engage your God-given gifts. Be diligent in serving others with my gifts. Be diligent in serving others with my gifts. Don't waste your gifts. Don't squander the gifts that God has blessed you with. Use the gifts God has given you to fulfill your mission, to bless others, to serve God. You see, whenever you choose to serve and give God your very best, whether you're serving in Journey Kids or on the worship arts team or on the welcome team, whether you're serving the homeless or maybe you're coming to the office and helping us with administrative work, be diligent as you serve others with your gifts. Again, the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 7, he writes these words. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it glad gladly. You know... The hardest part is just getting started. But by taking that that first step, when you do that, uh, it gets you started. And and sometimes you just have to keep trying until you find the right place. Maybe you try something. You just try it and you go there and you're like, hey, this is not really for me. That's okay. Step back and try something new. And so the first step is just to get started. Pray. Pick a place to serve and then jump in. And then if that's not right, find something else. If you'll go to our online connection card right now, and I don't know if you've seen this, but on our next steps part of our connection card, every week we list different places that you can serve at our church. And there are a lot of places you can get plugged in. If you're a creative uh, or a musician or a vocalist, you can join our worship arts team and you can sing, play an instrument. You can work on our production team behind the scenes. There is a place for you. If you love children and you're interested in investing in the next generation, then come and serve on our Journey Kids team. You can serve in the nursery and preschool and elementary. You can help with setup. You can make a difference there. Now, we do a background check for Journey Kids because that is uh, uh, an area where safety is, is of utmost importance for us there. But maybe you have the gift of hospitality, of welcoming and encouraging. Then maybe being on our welcome team and coming on Sundays and making people feel welcome when they attend. If you, like I said earlier, you like label makers, you you have the gift of administration, then come into our office during the week and serve on Monday or Thursday with our teams doing follow-up or preparing for the Sunday service. Or if you've got a heart for uh, mercy and for the less fortunate, come and serve in our community service teams and help us serve the less fortunate. There's a place for you to get plugged in. And so my challenge to you today is just to pick one. Check one of those areas and let us follow up and try it. Get involved. Even if it's just one hour this month, give it a shot and see what God does in your life. Now, compared to the speed of Jesse Owens or the jumping ability of Simone Biles, your gifts may be, they may seem less celebrated, less impactful, less appreciated. But that's your opinion, not God's. Because God says that if you'll partner with Him, that if you'll fully engage with your gifts, that He'll get the glory and that you'll get the growth and the blessing. And that's why I want to take a moment to say thank you right now to all of our Journey volunteers. Whatever you're, wherever you're serving right now, you're impacting real lives in ways that you cannot even imagine. Thank you for discovering your gifts and using them in our church. You're changing eternity. I'm so thankful for each of you. And if you want to live a fully engaged life that impacts the lives of those around you, then here's the key. The key is surrender. To surrender your gifts and your entire life to God. Our next verse is our final verse. It's found in Romans chapter 6, verse 13. It's our final verse, so let's read it out loud together. Are you ready? Go. 
Instead, give yourselves completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Listen, let God use your whole body and the spiritual gifts he's given you as an instrument to make an eternal difference in the lives of those around you. Look, maybe you're a follower of Jesus, but you've never surrendered your gifts to God. And you're missing out on what a fully engaged life is like, what he created you to do. Today, my challenge to you is to decide to find a place to serve and to fully surrender your gifts to him. See what he could do in your life. But maybe you're here, and before today, you would say, you know what, I've never made a decision to follow Jesus. You realize you've never surrendered your life to God. And maybe that's what God is asking you to do for the very first time today, to surrender your life to God, to ask Jesus to come into your life and to forgive you of your sins and to secure your eternity in heaven. If you've never taken that step, You can do that today. Whatever the case may be, choose today to surrender to God. Let Him be God. Trust Him. I invite you to do that as we pray together. If you would, wherever you're joining us for Church Online, let's bow our heads together and go to God in prayer. Father, thank you for creating us uniquely and with a specific purpose. Thank you for giving us talents and gifts to use for you. Right now, I want to pray for those who are not fully engaging their gifts. They're sitting on the sidelines. They're missing out on the true joy of using their gifts to bless others. Speak to their hearts right now and show them where and how you want to use them. And as we pray, I want to speak to those of you listening to me who maybe are not yet followers of Jesus. You haven't secured your eternity in heaven. Today, you can take that step. If you've never made the decision to follow Jesus, to make him the leader and Lord of your life, I invite you to do that right now as we pray. Just pray this prayer silently in your heart as I pray it out loud. Father, I admit that I'm a sinner and am in need of a Savior. I believe Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins and that he rose from the dead. Today, I ask for forgiveness. Jesus, come into my heart and be the leader of my life. From this point on, I choose to follow you as a part of your church. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.